Hello, a student wanted some help on this problem. It's solving uh, for x, where we have 13 times the sine of 2x minus 3 equals 3. So let's go through this. Uh, we have 13 times the sine of 2x minus 3 equals 3. So what are we trying to do? We're trying to solve for x. How do we do that? Just like in any algebraic equation, we're going to start by adding 3 here. I am solving for x. I'm going to balance both sides of my equation. That will get me 13 times the sine of 2x. And negative 3 plus 3 is 0. 3 plus 3 is 6. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 13. So I am going to divide by 13 on the left. These will cancel out and divide by 13 on the right. So now I'm left with the sine of... 2x equals 6 thirteenths. Now the new thing here for many students is how to solve for x when you have some kind of trig ratio and the answer is to take the inverse function. So take the inverse sine of both sides, the inverse sine of the sine of 2x equals the inverse sine of 6 thirteenths. Basically what's happening here is that when I take the inverse sine of the sine, uh, what I'm left with is just 2x. Uh, these are inverse functions and they essentially cancel each other out and you're going to be left with whatever's in here. So the left hand side is now 2x and 2x is the inverse sine of 6 thirteenths. And so, so here I want to find what angle has a sine of 6 thirteenths. So here it's not immediately obvious if I'm going to be doing this work with radians or degrees. Maybe it is to you, but if I look at my choices right here, I've got pi radians appearing. So I'm going to solve for this now on the calculator, but I'm just going to use uh, radian mode. So I press mode, go to radians, hit enter. Okay, quit out of there. Clear up any old work, and then I hit second sine, the inverse sine of 6 over 13. And what is this going to give us? You know, okay, so it's about a half radian. Okay, a half of a radian, uh, and that that measure, the angle measure, gives you a sine of six thirteenths. So I'm gonna, what is that? Point four seven nine seven. So it's about about zero point four seven nine seven. And here I'm gonna leave it on the calculator exactly as it is, but I'm only gonna write it out abbreviated, and any, if I add uh, any rotations, a number of rotations of 2 pi, right, I'm going to get the same sign. So right now, let me just give a little sketch of what's happening. Uh, use my line tool, give myself a y-axis, here's an x-axis, that is a crooked x-axis, we can be better than that, and give myself a unit circle, so here's my unit circle. And it's about half a radian. Where is that? Well, this is 3.14 radians, pi radians. This is about half of that. 3.14 cut in half, about 1.57. And we're at about half of that. So on the calculator, if you're not sure on this, you can test. Uh, the next landmark would be pi over 4. So that's about 0.78 radians, right? I'm marking that here. That's about 45 degrees pi over 4. So we're actually dealing, and it's good to sketch this out, we're dealing with even less than that. So I don't know if that's about pi over 8. It's about, it's a little more than half of that. So pi over 8, you don't really need to be this precise, but since I'm sketching this out for you, I might as well keep going. So, so it's a, pi over 8 is about 0.39. It's too small. We're about 0.5. So just for myself, this is about pi over 8. So it's it's in between here kind of in the middle, but not exactly. I'll just gonna sketch it out though. We're dealing with this measurement here. All right, this is about 0 0.47 radians. That's what we're looking at right here. Now, you have to remember the sine is the y value of the point on the unit circle. So we're told here, we're not told what the x value is. We could solve it using the Pythagorean theorem. But we're told that the sine of that angle of 6 thirteenths. That's the height of that angle. So that refers to sine. The question is, is there another point on the circle with that same height? That's right here. It's right directly across. 
right? It's right directly across. So I'm thinking, well, if this is pi radians, we're going back 0.47 radians, this angle measure here. And I wanted to say this is pi radians, the full 180, minus point f about, this is an approximation, 0.47 radians. That will be, I'll, I'll label it in blue, this angle measure right here, right? So it's pi minus 0.47 radians. And let's see if that gets us something that we can work with here. On the calculator, I have the exact measure still in there. So I'm going to do pi minus, go up, select it, get the best approximation possible, 2.66 radians. And that makes sense to me because pi radians would be the, the full half turn here. That's confusing, I shouldn't say full half turn. Pi radians would be a half turn, so it should be less than that, 2.66, about, about 2.66 radians. 2.66 radians. So that's this measure right here. I mean, all we do is take the full pi radians and then subtract this piece out, and um, we get the angle measure we're looking for. Again, that angle measure, all angle measures typically are from the x-axis. So this is the angle measure we're looking at. That is not drawn so nicely. This angle measure that we're looking at. So I essentially, I guess I mislabeled it here. Sorry, let me fix that. All right. I apologize. We're really looking at this angle right here. And what I was labeling was what's called the reference angle. We took away 0.47 radians, right? So it's pi radians, this half arc, minus this reference angle 0.47. That gives us the same, the same sign. It gives you a different cosine, a different x value. But this point right here is the opposite of whatever this x is and then has the same height of 613. So why do I show this to you? Having the flexibility of using this circle can help you come up with different valid answers here. So we know that 2x could equal this, and we also know now that 2x could be, put squiggle lines here, about 2.66 radians plus any amount of rotations, or 2 pi is a full rotation around the circle, so it ends up back at the same spot. So I'm saying I add 2 pi radians, and go all the way around the circle, and I end back here. That's a really sloppy drawing, sorry. Okay. So these are our two answers, but these these are defined in terms of 2x. You want to know what x equals. So x is going to equal half of this plus pi times n, right? So half of 0.4797 and half of 2.66. So on the calculator, I can grab those two values. And you have the exact values here, so no need to round, right? Divide by 2. 1.33, so about 1.33, 1 plus pi n, because we're dividing both terms by 2. And the other one is the 0.4797. That divided by 2. And that's going to get you 0.239 or so. So about, about 2.4 or so. So here, that's going to, I would, I would keep, for this student, I would say, yes, I agree with this. That matches this answer right here, where I divide x by 2. But this right here, we don't want negative 0.240. That, we're not dealing with negative signs. Right? Negative 2.40 would be based if it went down this way. Right? It went down negative 0.47, or at least clockwise, and cut that in half. Then that's what I would get. But here, I'm going to go with positive 0.240 plus pi times n, which matches our estimate here. Okay, hope that helps.